Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can configure user-defined aggregations on a model from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in data from a direct query data source. So to do that I'll click get data and in my case I had my data in a SQL Server. I'll type in the server name and importantly here I'm going to bring in all tables in direct query mode. We will be able to switch some tables to different storage modes later in the exercise. Now I want to get uh, a couple of tables from the AdventureWorks uh, tables. We're going to start with two dimensions, dim date and dim product, and we'll bring in a single fact table called fact internet sales. Once these three tables are loaded, we'll check the relationships. And this is going to be the basic model that we will add an aggregation table to um, and, and configure manage aggregations. So by default in my case um, the, uh, the relationship to the product ta table has been detected and it's using uh, product key to product key. What I'll do is, is connect the date table to the order date key like this. We'll assume referential integrity and we'll click OK and hopefully that connects in nicely. So as mentioned the product table is connected using the product table. Well we'll do this um, do the same thing as well. Clicking assume referential integrity means any direct query uh, statement that gets generated to the data source will use inner joins rather than left outer join. It does assume that um, you've done the work too as the feature su suggests. Um, uh, you, you have referential integrity in, you, in your data source but it's not important to the process of, of managing aggregations. So now we have a basic three table model. We can start dragging columns and, and creating measures and building a report. But um, any calculation that involves a column in the fact internet sales um, a table will use this raw table which has just under 200,000 uh, rows. Now I, I notice that I've got this uh, relationship around the wrong way here. So we'll flip that um, uh, and get that correct in the relationship side. So our two dim tables, uh, they're on the one side so they have a uh, primary key or a grain of, of one calendar day or, or one individual product and um, they connect to foreign key columns over here in the fact internet sales table. So this is our model ready to have an aggregation tables added to that. So the next step is to add the aggregation table. Now there are many ways you can do this including Power Query but the way I'm going to show you here and as explained in my blog again uses SQL Server and we can pass a, a T-SQL statement to generate that query. So we'll go back to the exact same data source and we will say in the advanced options we'll specify the query we want to use to generate that table and this is the query um, uh, this query is available over in my blog. So we select um, order date key which is what we used in our relationship, product date key and then we're summing a couple of numeric columns in the in the fact internet sales uh, table and we group by order date key and product key as well. So we can import this table and we click OK. Oh we need to put the um, VentureWorks DW, the database name, so clearly this isn't optional. Click OK and then what we should hopefully see uh, is a successfully executed query producing some results. Um, now this table here, while there's only a few rows in the um, preview, should be about 60,000 rows or one third the size of the underlying fact table. And let's load that into our model. Okay, and in and, and this process will take as long as it takes to um, uh, load the table which shouldn't be too long in this in this case. So the first thing I want to do once the uh, table has been loaded is give the aggregation table a meaningful name. Now this table will be automatically hidden at one of the latest steps. So the name of the table really is designed to be helpful to you as the model author to keep track of what the aggregate table uh, covers. So I'm going to right click on here, I'm going to rename and we're going to call it um, not the name of the query, there we go. So what we're, 
what I'm suggesting here in this name is this is an aggregate table because it has ag in the name. It's an aggregate of the fact internet sales fact table and it's aggregated by product and day. And if I position this here in between my two other tables, what I can now do is start connecting them. So order date quantity from the date table, order date key can be connected to here. And we should hopefully have the same relationship grain, that's great. And then the product key can be connected over here to the product key. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just run a basic query against our model in this state, just to make sure that um, we, we're not using the aggregate tables. So this is a, a bit of a before, um, so that once we have configured the aggregation uh, details correctly, we can then run exactly the same query um, as an after to um, uh, see that that's worked correctly. And here's the, the aggregation, uh, the relationship to product key. All right, so up in the external tools, what we can now do is start a session to DAX Studio that is um, automatically connected to this model. And then we can run a quick query, just a test to make sure that the aggregation is being missed. So we'll, we'll and you'll notice now that the, the, the fact, the aggregation table we just added is, is visible here. Um, it's, it's not italicized to show that it's invisible. So now what we can do is copy across a DAX query that is going to perform um, a sum of sales amount. Oh, what we need to do now, first of all, actually, is, is add these measures to the model. So we'll jump back to our Power BI desktop model and we'll add three measures to the fact internet sales table. So we need to jump back to the report view and we can say, I want to create a new measure and we're going to add three measures here. The first one is going to be just a sum because we're using the sum function here of the sales amount column in our uh, fact table. Now note, uh, we're not going to come back and modify these queries, even though these queries believe they are referencing a column in, um, in the fact table, later when we uh, configure aggregations we'll be able to automatically reroute these queries to the ag table without needing to change the stacks. So we have a sum of, sum of sales amount, sum of order quantity, and finally, I'm going to do a, a, a count of table. Oh, I think I've just added this one twice. So let's put this in. Click OK. So that was our second measure. Then finally, what we'll do is we'll add our third measure, which is a, just a simple table count. And save. So now we can jump back across over to um, DAX Studio and we can see these are the three measures that we just added um, and we're grouping by calendar year and color which happen to be uh, two columns in the in each of the date table uh, each of the dimension tables notice these aren't on the grain the primary key of the table they can be any column within there so let's turn on our server timings from the ribbon and down here in the bottom corner we can see that it's waiting for trace to update it's ready to be run now we can click the run button and it shouldn't take too long, just a one or two seconds. Um, we can see the results of that query, uh, 36 rows. But importantly, what we're looking for here is in the server timings tab at the moment. There's a single row here. There's no information here about um, whether any attempt was made to try and use any aggregation tables. Even though we have the aggregation table in the model yet, the model doesn't actually know it can be used as an aggregate table. And also here in the subclass, we see that a, um, uh, it generated a SQL uh, statement, which implies it fired um, uh, the query out to a direct query data source. And we can see the XM SQL uh, statement. You know, I should probably be able to copy this statement over to a, um, a T-SQL query client and run this and, and probably get the same results. But it took 1.65 seconds. But we know that that's not working. Uh, it's not using the AG table just yet. So now let's jump back to the Power BI model and configure the aggregation table so that it can be used. So we go to the data model here 
and on the aggregation table and import mode that we connected, let's um, click the ellipsis and go to the manage aggregation option here. All right, so we don't need to configure the order date key. The reason why we don't need to configure that is because we have a relationship to that table. There is an alternative method for you to use um, uh, aggregate tables, which I will cover in a later blog and video, but for now we can leave that blank. Order quantity, was it, which is a numeric column in the fact table, we, can, we do need to configure something here. So we're going to say that the order quantity column in our aggregation table is an alternative um, when the sum function is used over the fact table over the order quantity column. So we're, we're, we're defining that the order quantity column in our aggregation table is an alternative to the order quantity column in the, in the detail table when the sum uh, function has been used. The product key uh, column we can use, row we can, we can leave blank because we have a relationship to the, um, uh, a many to one relationship to, the, uh, to that DIM table. And then finally, the sales amount which does exist in our T-SQL query in our aggregate table, we can do the same thing. We can say that that is a sum over uh, a column in the fact internet sales table and that column happens to be sales amount. Nice and simple. Now the reason why it's gray at the moment is because the data types do not match. So we cannot, can, we cannot configure this just yet. So well, what we'll need to do is clear that, apply it. Now in, a, in applying this, what we've done now is we can run a query against that will successfully uh, hit against the order quantity column but not the sales amount column so let's have a look to see why the sales amount column couldn't be configured so uh, we can click on the sales amount column and we see that the data type happens to be decimal number but over here in the fact internet sales column the sales amount column is fixed decimal number. Now you could either align these one of two ways um, but probably the recommended way uh, that I would suggest is to make sure that the um, we're using fixed decimal over over decimal which will have some benefits for the uh, data model compression. So we click on sales amount and we change this to be fixed decimal. Okay and what that means now is when we go back into the manage aggregations dialog and we come down to the sales amount we should successfully be able to match um, or map the, um, the the sales amount column in the aggregation table over the, the the same equivalent column in the detail table and that's it we're going to leave the precedence value to be zero this is only useful when you have multiple aggregation tables in your model and, and in this example we, we won't i will cover that in a future video so we apply all now now what's happened is the aggregation table has automatically been switched to become hidden so it's not accessible or visible to your end users you do not want people to be writing um, reports or calculations using columns in in this table you want people to be still using the columns here and have the system uh, take advantage of the columns in the ag hidden aggregation table when it can and when it makes sense. So the last thing we're going to do while we're in this mode is set, this, set the uh, storage mode for the two dimension tables to be dual mode. So I'll click on the dim product table and under advanced I'm going to change from direct query to dual and what dual mode does is it creates two versions of the table one is a direct query version and the other is an import version so at the moment it's going to import data into the model now when it uses the it will use the import version when it makes sense um, such as a slicer query that's or a query to generate values for a slicer that only needs to scan the column in this table and not connect or, or, or join to any other uh, tables to, to get its values and in that, in that instance, the engine will use the import version of this dual mode table. But in other scenarios, such as when we are in fact um, uh, running a query against uh, a table jointed in product, 
then it will use the DQ version of that table. And you know, again, I will I'll give examples in a later video that show exactly why that's a useful thing to do. It's, it, it's all about minimizing the amount of rows and data that need to move back and forward between the direct query source and the uh, Power BI model um, to resolve any queries. So it has a nice uh, header along the top that signifies which table is dual mode, uh, which ones are in DQ mode, and then we just need to flick the date table over to, to dual mode. Now, this won't hopefully take too long. And then what we can do is jump back to DAX Studio and rerun our exact same query in the same mode. So uh, our fact table is in is our import mode, our two DIM tables are in dual mode, and our, our raw fact internet table, which could be millions if not billions of rows, we do not need to bring that data into our model, we can leave it out into direct query, and hopefully most of our queries will be satisfied from the, um, from the aggregate table. So let's quickly jump back to DAX Studio now. We should, st should hopefully have our trace still running, and I'm just going to click the run button, and we get a different result here. We're saying that the uh, an attempt was made, but it failed. And what happened was it still hit the SQL table, but let's have a look to see why this failed. So we can over here, look at the details, and try and figure out uh, missing count rows mapping. Okay, so what's happened here is the sum of sales has probably worked, sum of order quantity has worked, but we didn't configure the count of sales in the aggregation, and that's why it's failed. So let's comment this out for now before we go and fix this in the manage aggregation. So if we were to simplify this calculation to just run these two um, uh, calculations, what we'll find is that a match has now been found. It only took 41 milliseconds as opposed to 1.6. And, and we can look down into the detail here and, and just see exactly why that, that matched. So Okay, so let's pop this back. rerun and we'll see that the match has failed then we can go and it has then we can go back to power bi desktop go to manage aggregations and count of rows is going to be count table rows of fact internet sales and we don't need to detail column in this in this case we click apply working on it DAX Studio, we have our query back in its original format, we hit the run, and we see that a match has now been found. We can click on this to see the detail if we need to, um, and notice that the subclass um, for this and in, in the previous uh, query that a match was found, uh, we, we performed a scan. Now the scan implies that we're hitting an import table as opposed to escaping out to a direct query table. And that's it. That's, that's a one of the probably the most simple variation of the built-in user-defined model aggregation feature, but that should now mean the way this product is uh, the way this has been configured that so long as we drag these two measures to our model and perhaps slice and dice by uh, um, any column that happens to be either in the um, date dimension table and we'll switch calendar year onto the axis we'll turn this into maybe a matrix and then perhaps uh, we can go to any column at all in the product table such as color and these queries will be hit hitting the aggregation every single time and just one last tip to show you how you can uh, confirm that might be happening is in the performance analyzer we can start recording we can refresh this visual and what we'll see is the the DAX query that uh, used not only was it faster um, but we don't have a direct query component here the actual time it took to run the DAX query was 40 milliseconds uh, there was no direct query component here and you know the rest of the time was just waiting to run or rendering the um, the visual so hopefully that was useful this is as i mentioned the, the simplest variation of the
built-in feature. My next um, articles will go into more advanced uh, topics and scenarios and, and I will include a video on those. So hopefully um, you can see the benefit and appeal of this and hopefully this video is enough to show you that it works and it's uh, how easy it is to get up and going. But please feel free to hit me with questions either in the comments or back on my blog um, if you'd like to know more about this feature. Thank you.